Don't you just love setting up your computer? Installing libraries, configuring them, and making sure they're all compatible. It's, it's just so much fun. No? Yeah, me either. That's why we're gonna skip around all of that nonsense today using deep learning VM images on Google Compute Engine. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the arts, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufang Guo, and on this episode, we're going to check out how to take advantage of deep learning VM images to make setting up a new environment a piece of cake. The Google Cloud deep learning VM image makes it easy and fast to instantiate a VM image containing the most popular deep learning and machine learning frameworks, all on a Google Compute Engine instance. It lets you launch Compute Engine instances pre-installed with your choice of ML frameworks like TensorFlow or even PyTorch. And you can easily add cloud TPU and, of course, GPU support. You can either instantiate the image using the Google Cloud Platform Cloud Launcher UI or from the command line. So now you get to use your favorite open source tools even sooner without having to keep them up to date or deal with installation troubles. The deep learning VM images are pre-packaged as a click-to-deploy virtual machine that can be accessed in the marketplace, formerly known as Cloud Launcher. Search for deep learning VM and select Launch on Compute Engine. There, you can select from a number of different deep learning VM images with configurations of CPU, memory, storage, GPU, and your choice of installed libraries. There are just a ton of combinations available, and you can fine tune them for your specific workload. The best part is that unlike a typical computer under your desk, the hardware for a VM can be edited at a moment's notice. Need more memory? Double the disk space, or uh, say another GPU, or four. Just edit away. Let's take a look at how you can create these VMs using the gcloud command line tool. We'll start with the simpler case of a virtual machine with only CPU, no GPU. In this case, we just need to decide what zone to put our VM in and what machine learning library we want to use with it. Here's the list of all the available images to choose from. Let's say we do tf-latest-cpu. The full command to run this would look something like this. And once you run this, it will take a moment to provision the machine and install all the software packages. Once the VM is up and running, you can SSH into the machine. Instead of a standard SSH command, I would recommend using this slightly modified SSH command, which does a bit of port forwarding for you to enable you to connect to JupyterLab via your local Chrome browser, just like you are running it locally. Now, when you run this command, it'll drop you into an SSH session. You can poke around there in the command line if you'd like, but the real good stuff awaits in your browser. Head over to localhost-8080, and it'll magically load up JupyterLab. It'll just be there. Now we can do a whole separate video on just JupyterLab alone, but in brief, it's like Jupyter Notebooks, but way cooler. You can manage your entire data science workflow from here, running multiple notebooks in different tabs and with different versions of Python even, and take some notes, say, in a text file. OK, so that's the end-to-end -end workflow for a CPU-powered virtual machine. Now let's say we want GPUs, because it seems like everyone wants GPUs these days. There are a few additional considerations here that you'll need to keep in mind as you work through this process. The tricky part of doing all of this is that you need to coordinate just a couple of things to get these GPUs working right. First, let's take a look at what GPUs are available. As of this recording, there are options that include the K80, the P100, and the V100. So you'll need to perhaps do a little bit of research to choose which one you want to use. Once you've decided on your GPU of choice, check out what regions a given GPU is available. You can see that shown here. And finally, head over to your quotas page in Cloud Console to ensure that you have enough quota to provision a machine with that combination of GPU in that zone. This final step is crucial to getting your VM provisioned successfully. If you don't have the necessary quota, go ahead and click on Edit Quotas and submit a quota request. On the surface, it seems to be all about having the necessary quota. 
but it's a bit more nuanced than that, since the quota specifies not only what model of GPU, but also what region that GPU sits in. OK, so say you've figured out what GPU you want, what zone it should be in, and confirm that you have the necessary quota to provision it. Now let's look at how to actually get a GPU-powered deep learning VM going. The step that differs from all the previous CPU workflow that we just saw is how we actually start up the VM. We can take the command that we used before and add to it a few extra arguments. First, we'll need to set the maintenance policy to terminate. This is due to the fact that we can't live migrate a GPU-powered virtual machine. So for maintenance, it'll actually shut down the VM, but you can have it auto restart. So always be sure to save your work. Next, choose your GPU type and count, informed by that quota deep dive we just did. And finally, add a piece of metadata, which will ensure that the drivers to power your GPU are installed on your behalf. It's a couple of additional steps to get these GPU-powered VMs working, but I promise it's worth the effort. Once you run this command, the rest of the workflow is exactly the same. And when you SSH into your machine, JupyterLab is there waiting for you. And if you do a pip freeze, you can see that the version of TensorFlow that is installed is indeed TensorFlow-GPU. So the next time you're thinking about installing a bunch of libraries by hand, remember to save yourself some time and energy by using the deep learning VM images on Google Cloud Platform. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. And if you enjoyed it, please like it and subscribe to get all the latest episodes right when they come out. Now, head on over to your console and make yourself a deep learning environment in the cloud.